Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. All right, so we're going to talk about empirical and molecular formulas. Um, empirical formulas are the smallest whole number ratio of a compound. Uh, ionic compounds are already in its empirical formula because it's already in its lowest ratio. When you bring two ions together, it's actually in its lowest ratio already. So ionic compounds don't have an empirical and molecular formula. However, covalent compounds or molecules do have empirical and molecular formulas, which uh, we'll, does, we'll uh, illustrate up here. So we have CH4, and CH4 actually is an empirical formula. It's already in its lowest, uh, lowest ratio. It has a, basically a, the subscripts of 1 and 4, and we can't reduce those anymore. So this actually is an, a, an empirical formula. However, it also is a molecular formula. There is a compound out there that has the formula CH4, methane, a very common compound. So this is an empirical formula and a molecular formula. Let's go to this guy. We have C6H24. These numbers can actually be reduced to, lower, uh, to a lower ratio. 6 can go into 6, and 6 can also go into 24, making it CH4. Notice they have the same empirical formulas. However, their molecular form formulas are very different. They have different uh, chemical, chemical properties, but its empirical formula is the same, which actually comes in handy later on. Let's look at this guy. C18H72. When you, uh, this, this guy is also its molecular formula, but it can be reduced to 18 can go into itself and 72, making its empirical formula also CH4. So anytime you have um, its lowest ratio, that's an empirical formula. If it's not in its lowest ratio, we're going to call that a molecular formula. All right, so let's go into percent composition, and that will help us in determining molecular empirical, form empirical formulas. Okay, so if you know the chemical formula, you can also find the percent composition. Okay, let's take methane, CH4. All right, so in order to find percent, percent is part of the whole. So we have to find the mass of the whole thing, then find the mass of each part. So the mass of the whole thing for CH4 is, carb looking at our periodic table, the mass of carbon is 12 grams, the mass of hydrogen is 1 gram times 4 is 4 grams, so 12 plus 4 is 16 grams. So this whole thing has a mass of 16 grams for every mole. Okay, so we're just going to do the, percent, the percentage of each element. So let's look at carbon. Carbon has a mass of 12 grams, like we had mentioned from the periodic table. The whole thing is a mass of 16 grams. And since it's a percentage, we're going to multiply by 100. And we know that of this whole thing, carbon um, has a mass of seven, occupies 75% of, uh, of this compound. What about hydrogen? Hydrogen, um, you, can also, you can always use, obviously assume, subtract 75 from 100, and you get 25%. But let's actually calculate that to make sure. So um, hydrogen has a mass of 4 in this case, 1 for every 1, and we have 4 of them. So we have a mass of 4 grams. Uh, the total mass of the whole thing is 16 grams. Multiply that by 100. And indeed, you do get 25%. So in this case, carbon is 25, uh, 75%, um, sorry, 75% of methane, and hydrogen is 25% of methane. Let's look at C6H24. C6H24, we find the percentage of this guy. So six, six carbons and 24 hydrogens gives us, a, gives us a total mass of oh, 96 grams for every mole. OK, so let's do the part again. So six, car six carbons gives us a mass of 72 grams over a total of 96 grams for the whole thing. Multiplied by 100, and lo and behold, we should get 75% carbon, which makes complete sense because they have the exact same empirical formula. They should be uh, ratios of each other, which makes complete sense, which then I'm not going to sit there and calculate, but we can also just assume that it's 25% hydrogen. Okay? So this is very helpful in determining, um, and empirical formulas are very helpful in determining percent composition as well. But let's say instead of having percent composition, and finding percent composition, let's say they gave us percent composition. Let's say we analyzed a substance, which we didn't know what it was, and we found it to be 36.84% nitrogen and 63.16% oxygen. They gave us a percent composition. What are we going to do with this information? We have to figure out the compound. So in order to do this, I'm going to change this. Um, I'm actually going to assume I have 100 grams of this substance. So I can change this percentage to grams, because I have a, if, I, if I have 36.84% nitrogen and I have 100 grams of it, that means I have 36.84 grams of nitrogen. And I want to figure out how many moles that is. So then I'm going to divide it by its molar mass. And the molar mass of nitrogen is 14, approximately 14 grams. And I get, um, what do I get? 2.63. 
that's how many moles of nitrogen I have in this substance. I'm going to again change to do the same thing with oxygen. I get 63.16 grams divided by its smaller mass. In this case, it's 16 grams. And I get hmm, 3.95 moles. So this is in moles. OK, so essentially, if I just stopped, I can say I have N2.63 O3.95. But this is one ugly looking empirical formula. This is one ugly looking compound. We don't like having decimals in the compound. So what are we going to do? We're going to divide it, make it, try and make it into whole numbers. So we're going to divide it by its smallest. The smallest one is 2.63. So I'm going to divide everything by 2.63 because that is the smallest one. And then I get N1, I don't have to indicate the 1, O1.5. Uh oh, it's still in a decimal point. Um, a lot of times it won't be, and it'll be nice and round for you, but in this case, it's still in a decimal point. So what am I going to do? I can make this a round number just by multiplying everything by 2. N2, O3. And is this an empirical formula? Yes, indeed it is. It does follow everything we talked about, so this is the empirical formula. We just discovered it. Awesome, great. But what if we go a step further? Um, it's, it is known that the molar mass of this substance is 228 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula? Well, this is the empirical formula. What is the mass of the empirical formula? 2 times 14, because that's the mass of nitrogen. I'm going to put the units in. That's for nitrogen. Um, plus 3 times 16 gives me a molar mass of um, 76 grams per mole. Okay, so then we want to say how many times is this to get to, what do I have to multiply 76 by to get 228? So I can just say 76 grams per mole times x equals 228 grams per mole. And I solve this problem and I get x to be 3. So basically, I'm going to have to multiply N2O3, these subscripts, by 3 to get the molecular formula. So I'm going to say 2N6O9. That is my molecular formula. And if I were to check it and figure out the molar mass of this, which I'm not going to do right now, but if I were to check the molar mass of this and multiply everything 6 times 14 plus 9 times 16, which is the molar mass, I will get 228 grams, which will make sure I check it and this is correct. So that is uh, basically the massive difference between empirical and molecular formulas and being able to uh, um, calculate them from their uh, percent composition. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>